वेलकम टू लर्निंग विथ यू एन पी इन द सेशन ऑफ पाइथन फॉर डेटा साइंस वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट लिस्ट प्रॉपर्टीज दैट इंक्लूड्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट लिस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंशन लिस्ट रिपीटेशन स्प्लिटिंग द लिस्ट लिस्ट कॉन्कैटिनेशन एंड फाइनली मेंबरशिप चेकिंग लेट्स बिगिन विथ अंडरस्टैंडिंग द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ लिस्ट फर्स्ट कम्स लिस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंशन List comprehension is a concise way to create list in Python. It allows you to generate a new list by applying an expression to each item in an existing iterable. List comprehensions are often used for transforming and filtering elements in a list. It allows you to write more compact and readable code compared to traditional loops. The general way or the basic format is mentioned here. This line creates a new list called new list by processing each item in an existing iterable. The expression is applied to each item and only items that meet the condition are included. The if condition part is optional and is used to filter the items. Let's look at the pseudo code representation of it. Step 1: Define the iterable. Example: a list or range means identify the iterable you want to process such as a list or range step 2 define the expression to evaluate for each item means specify the expression to apply to each item in the iterable step 3 optionally define a condition to filter items means optionally set a condition to include only certain items step 4 create a new list using list comprehension syntax means Use list comprehension syntax to generate a new list based on the expression and optional condition. Here are three examples demonstrating list comprehension. The first example demonstrates how list comprehension can be used to transform each element in a list efficiently. In this example, we start with a list called my list that contains integers one to five. Using list comprehension, we create a new list called squared list. by squaring each element from my list the expression mentioned here is applied to each item x in my list when we print the squared list it displays the square of the elements let's execute and check as discussed the output shows the squared values of the original list elements the second example illustrates how list comprehension can be used to generate a new list based on the length of elements in an existing list We have a list called words containing the strings hello world python comprehension using list comprehension we create a new list called lens by calculating the length of each word in words list the expression mentioned here is applied to each item word in words when we print lens it shows the output which are the lengths of corresponding words in the original list let's execute and check As discussed these are the lengths of corresponding words in the original list the third example shows how list comprehension can be used to create a list of tuples representing all possible coordinate pairs in a given range we used list comprehension to generate a list of coordinate pairs the coordinate list is created by combining values of x and y where both x and y range from 0 to 2 the expression generates pairs of each combination of x and y values within the specified range when we print it it displays the pairs of specified list let's execute and check it displayed the coordinate pairs of specified list second comes list repetition list repetition involves creating a new list by repeating an existing list a specified number of times this is done using star operator also called multiplication operator List repetition can also be defined as a technique used to create a new list by duplicating the elements of an existing list multiple times. The syntax to do this is here. This line of code creates a new list named repeated list by repeating the elements of an existing list my list specified number of times n. When you multiply my list by n, Python duplicates the element of my list n times forming a longer list. When you multiply my list by n, Python duplicates the elements of my list n times, forming a longer list. Let's look at the pseudo code representation of it. Step one: 
initialize a list variable mylist with some elements means create a list called mylist with some elements step 2 determine the number of times you want to repeat the list means decide how many times you want to repeat this list step 3 use the star operator to repeat this list means multiply the list by the desired number of times using the multiplication operator to get the repeated list here are two examples demonstrating list repetition the first example demonstrates how list repetition allows you to easily create longer list by duplicating existing ones in this example we start with a list called my list containing the elements 1 2 and 3 by using the multiplication operator and multiplying my list by 3 we create a new list called repeated list that contains elements of my list repeated 3 times so when we print it it gives us the output let's execute and check as discussed the output displays each element of my list repeated 3 times consecutively the second example illustrates how list repetition can easily duplicate the contents of existing list to create a new list with repeated elements in this example we have a list named my list containing elements of different data types an integer a string a floating point number another list and a boolean value by using the multiplication operator and multiplying my list by 2 we create a new list called repeated list where each element of my list is repeated twice so when we print it it gives us the output let's execute and check the output displays the elements of my list duplicated resulting in a longer list third comes splitting the list splitting the list typically involves dividing it into smaller list based on a delimiter or a condition in python strings can be split into list using the split method however when splitting a list itself you might use slicing to extract specific portions or you may need to implement custom logic to determine how the list should be divided into smaller segments this process allows for organizing and manipulating list data in more manageable chunks here is a syntax to do it this line of code creates a new list called sublist by extracting a portion of elements from the original list which is my list this extraction is done using slicing notation where start specifies the index to start from which is inclusive and end specifies the index to end before which is exclusive the elements between these indices including the one at start but excluding the one at end are included in sublist let's look at the pseudo code representation of it step 1 initialize a list variable my list with some elements means begin by setting up your original list my list with some elements step 2 determine the start and end indices for this slice means decide on the starting and ending points for the sublist indicating the indices where you want to begin and end the extraction step 3 use slicing to create a sublist means the sublist will include elements from the starting index up to but not including the ending index here are two examples demonstrating splitting the list the first example demonstrates how slicing can be used to create a sublist by specifying the desired range of elements from the original list in this example we have a list named my list containing the integers from 1 to 5 by slicing my list using the notation my list 1 to 4 we specify that we want to extract elements starting from the index 1 which is inclusive up to index 4 which is exclusive this includes the elements at indices 1 2 and 3 but not 4 so the resulting sublist contains the elements 2 3 and 4 the print statement prints the output let's execute and check as discussed the elements of sublist are 2 3 and 4 the second example illustrates how slicing can be customized to extract elements from a list based on specified indices and step size in this example we start with a list named my list which contains elements of various data types including integer a string floating point number a list and a boolean value by using slicing notation my list 1 4 2 we specify that we want to extract element starting from the index 1 up to index 4 with a step size of 2 this means that 
we want to include elements at indices 1 and 3, skipping every second element in between. So, the resulting sublist consists of elements hello 246. When we print the sublist, it displays a sublist showing the selected elements from the original list based on the specified slicing parameters. Let's execute and check. As discussed, the output contains hello 2, 4 and 6. Fourth comes concatenation. Concatenation of list involves combining multiple lists into a single list using the plus operator. This creates a new list containing all elements from the concatenated list in order that they are specified. It's similar to appending one list to the end of another resulting in a longer list with all elements from the original list. This process is useful for combining data from multiple sources or assembling list dynamically. Here is a syntax to do so. This line merges two lists, list 1, list 2, into a new list called concatenated list. It combines the elements of both lists one after the other, creating a longer list that contains all elements from list 1 followed by the elements of list 2. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize two list variables, list1 and list2. Means, start by creating two separate lists, list1 and list2, each containing elements. Step 2. Use the plus operator or addition operator to concatenate the list. Means, combine the list using the plus operator or addition operator. The result will be a new list that includes all elements from list1 followed by all elements from list2, forming a single concatenated list. This example demonstrates how concatenation merges the contents of separate list into a single list. In this example, we have two lists. List 1 containing integers from 1 to 5. List 2 containing elements of various data types. By using the addition operator or the plus operator to concatenate list 1 and list 2, we create a new list called concatenated list. This new list includes all elements from list 1 followed by all elements of list 2, maintaining the order of elements from both the original list. When we print the concatenated list, it displays the output showing the combination of elements from both the list in a concatenated list. Let's execute and check. As discussed, the output contains the elements from both the list. Fifth comes membership checking. Membership checking is used to determine whether a specific element is present in a list. This is done using the in and not in operators. The in operator checks if an element is present in the list, returning true if found and false otherwise. Conversely, the not in operator evaluates to true if the element is not found in the list and false if it is. These operators provide a convenient way to search for elements within list and make the decisions based on their presence or absence. The syntax to do this is shown here. This line checks whether a specific element exists within the list called mylist. If the element is found in the list, each member is assigned true. Otherwise, each member is assigned false. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize a list variable mylist with some elements. Means, start by creating a list named mylist with various elements. Step 2. Determine the element to check for membership. Means, Identify the element you want to check for membership within my list. Step 3. Use the in operator to check if the element is in the list. Means, utilize the in operator which returns true if the specified element is present in my list and false otherwise. This allows you to easily determine whether the element exists in the list or not. Here are three examples demonstrating membership checking. The first example demonstrates how the in operator facilitates straightforward determination of an element's presence in the list. In this example, we have a list named mylist containing integers from 1 to 5. We are interested in checking whether the element 3 is existing in the list or not. By using the expression element in mylist, we utilize the in operator to perform membership checking. Since 3 is present in mylist, the variable is member displays true. When we print is member, it displays true. Let's execute and check. As discussed, the output is true. In this example, the code checks whether the element 6 is present in the mylist. Utilizing in operator, it evaluates if 
element 6 is a member of my list. Since 6 is not found in my list, the variable is member is assigned false. When it is printed using print statement, it displays false. Let's execute and check. As discussed, the output is false. Finally, the third example illustrates how the not in operator efficiently determines the absence of an element within a list. In this example, the code checks if element 7 is absent from the list my list. Using the not in operator, it checks whether an element is not a member of my list. Since 7 is not found in my list, the variable is member is assigned true. When printed, the output displays true. Let's execute this and check. Since 7 is not present in my list, the output is displayed as true. This is all about today's lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.